how's it going? Well, I was going to be recording an important voiceover tonight, but I just don't like the way my voice sounds. There's this weird feeling I have here, and whenever I've had that, some of my clients have complained, so I'd rather not record it tonight with that sound. So they want a very specific kind of rich sound, and I don't know whether I'd give them that tonight. So they're giving me a lot of time, so that's good. Anyway... There have been a number of things that have changed, that have shifted within me politically over this past week, particularly since I made my video response to Michael Knowles. And it was kind of a wake-up call for me. So I guess in under five years, the right wing has reverted back to the 1990s when it comes to LGBT issues, women's issues, race issues and equality in general. Things that I thought it would be, you know, at least 10 or 15 more years before we'd start to have to talk about it again, because I thought that, for the most part, these things had been settled. Or, you know, mostly settled. Settled enough where it's not just part of the main discussion anymore, you know? But here it is again, and we have all this work to do again. Apparently, YouTube atheism and online atheism in general never happened. So many of the things that atheists and non-religious people were trying to get out in the open, it never happened, right? And now we again have to have all of these painstaking discussions that apparently got us nowhere because look where we're at now. We've regressed to a period of over 20 years ago. At least the right wing has. You know, all this talk of, oh, oh, no, the right wing has changed. No, no, you haven't. I'm apparently supposed to have mutual growth with people who think I'm going to burn in hell for eternity. Women should apparently have mutual growth with people who think that a woman's job is to be a homemaker. Black people should have mutual growth with people who won't even acknowledge that if someone comes from a demographic that's in the majority, that that person is going to have some advantages. We should all apparently have mutual growth with people who don't think that humans have contributed at all to climate change and who think evolution is a failed theory. Yep, we should all have mutual growth with these people. We should meet them halfway, right? No, no, I'm not going to be a Dave Rubin. We can all see how pathetic Dave Rubin is, and yet that's the kind of kowtowing I'm expected to do towards very religious right-wing viewpoints. You know, otherwise I'm closed-minded, right? Either be Dave Rubin or be considered closed-minded. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll pick the label closed-minded because, you know, I'm not going to be a, a pushover like Dave Rubin. I honestly don't know if I have the patience for this shit again. As I said, part of society, the rightward part of society, has regressed back to the 1990s. Why would I want to work that hard again on something that's probably going to come crashing down again when Republicans put in another Trump? You know, if that's all it apparently takes for Republicans to regress to the late 1990s in just four years. I mean, you know they're going to want another version of Trump, if not Trump himself. We have a lot of work to do if we want to keep that from happening. Anyway, you know, through all of this thinking that I've been doing about this stuff, you know, there's, there's so many conversations I've had with people on the left, sometimes the far left, that, you know, I didn't really consider at the time, I mean, I, I, I listened, but I didn't agree with them at the time, that now we're starting to kind of go, well, you know, maybe they had a point. Some of this stuff is really hitting home for me lately. I'm definitely gravitating a little more towards the left recently. Because I'm, I'm not seeing the right wing willing to learn anything. And so many of them pretend that they've already bent over backwards to try to, you know, meet people on the left halfway. And it's just like, really? Many people on the right try to act as though they're just working so hard to appease the left if they simply don't treat them like crap. Yep, it's so hard to not call people slurs. It's so hard to treat everyone as humans, right? You know, and don't get me wrong, you know, I've seen the left treat people like crap quite a bit. Okay, so as far as treating people like crap, yeah, yeah both sides are pretty, 
are pretty guilty. But, you know, there's this notion that, you know, well, someone couldn't possibly have rotten beliefs if they treat people decently. So, you know, apparently I'm supposed to just be so thankful to religious right-wingers who don't treat me like I'm a moral abomination for being gay. Because, you know, it's such hard work to not treat people who you think are inferior as if they're inferior. Have some empathy after all, because that's a lot of hard work that we should all be thankful for. You know, but apparently I'm supposed to go hardcore against the left, but treat the right with kid gloves. If I'm talking about the left, I can make as many generalizations as I want. I can be as mean as I want, and it's cool. And in some cases, it's even encouraged. But if I'm talking about the right, I can't even make trivial and harmless generalizations. And you know, I'm an absolutely terrible, intolerant, awful person because I told Michael Knowles to fuck off. And yet, currently and for the past four years, people on the right have called the left snowflakes. Well, how does that work now? Did the right wing change the definition of snowflake so it can only apply to people on the left? And the right wing tries to claim, oh, we're against censorship. Yeah, as long as it's something that you like. The moment it's something you really don't like, you have no problem with censorship. You have no problem with canceling something. Look at how so many people on the right want to cancel Cardi B. It's the 2000s equivalent of what people said about Elvis. Oh, his gyrating motions. Oh, it's, it's going to be the downfall of our society. You know, according to people like Candace Owens, you know, oh, it's, it's society falling apart. WAP is going to destroy the culture. Yeah, good old Candace Owens. Let's, let's put on a pedestal Candace Owens. A black woman who tries very, very, very hard, works very hard to try to be exactly what white Republicans and white nationalists want all black people to be like. You know, to declare that black people themselves are the problem and that the system bends over backwards to accommodate them. You know, that kind of white nationalist kind of message. You know, not like all those messages that come from all those uppity black people, right? I hope Candace is getting a lot of money for all this grifting she's doing. And pretty much all of these viewpoints have one thing in common. Christian supremacy, or more accurately, Abrahamic religious supremacy. It's the belief that Christian culture should remain the default, and that we should all be very, 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 very afraid of that changing in any way. Even some atheists play into this. It just seems to a lot of people that the scariest thing that could possibly happen would be for society to change, for culture to change. People don't want to have to adapt. They want things to be the same as they've been for decades. The atheists that play into this, like people like uh, Live Life 8072, think law enforcement should become even more authoritarian than they already are. It's this notion that we've become too permissive in this society. Whenever I run across an atheist saying such things, I, I honestly question whether they're really atheists. I mean, since they apparently just love religious culture. Do you really want to be ruled by religion? Well, I guess these particular atheists do, so... Again, I'm not suggesting that we can get rid of religion. But I am saying that we should be vigilant in not letting church and state get combined. And we should work at continuing to dismantle laws that are based on religion. And yeah, I'm just a guy with opinions on the internet. There's nothing particularly special about me in that regard. There are many people who are far better at speaking their minds than I am. But I'm here anyway. And I thank you for watching.